sand, no? Yes. Can you even imagine the beach without sand? No. At bakit kaya merong iba't ibang kulay na sand? Did you know that there's more to sand than for building sand castles at the beach? Here are some quick facts. Sand is the material you get when rocks or minerals are broken down. Rocks weather and decompose over a long period of time by many factors such as water, wind, gravity, and other forces. The sand ay, it's the size of the grain. So yung sand is much smaller than the cobble and the pebble. Ito yung mga malalaking bato. And then much bigger than the silt and the mud. Yung beach sand, unang-una, they act as the first defense sa mga waves na galing sa dagat. Barrier siya, kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng differentiation ng plants and organisms na nagtatrive sa land and then those organisms na nagtatrive sa water. So, piniprevent nung sand na pumasok yung mga salt water from entering the land. Kaya yung way of living ng mga organisms and plants ay magkaiba dun sa mga organisms and plants na nagtatrive sa water. Kung kayo ay beachgoer, maaaring napapansin ninyo na ang ilan sa ating mga beaches ay may iba't ibang kulay ng beach sand. Some beaches are known for their fine white sand, while others have black, gray, green, or even pink beach sand. This is because of the different rocks and minerals that make up the sand. And yung composition ng sand, nagde-depend siya from the source rock. So may mga sand na kulay puti, and then may mga sand na kulay itim. The color of the sand is uh, either biogenic in source, or either sourced from the surrounding rocks. Kaya iba't iba yung kulay ng sand. So may mga sand na kulay itim, ito yung sourced from mafic uh, origin. Ito yung mga rocks from the volcanic eruptions. And there are sand na nagka-transform from black, either different colors of red and green. So iba-iba rin yung source niyan, either metamorphic rocks or either igneous rocks. And then there are rocks that are white in color. Ito yung mga rocks na either biogenic, yung mga corals, corams, and then mga sedimentary rocks. Yung Pilipinas kasi, karamihan ng mga, ng, ng mga volcanoes natin are from uh, subduction-related processes. So, basically, andesitic and basaltic rocks yan. Mga itim, lichen, iron, and magnesium. So, may mga minerals na unstable at a certain pressure and temperature. So, natatransform sila chemically and mechanically. So, may mga minerals like pyroxene and cornblend na dark green and greenish na nanatransform into another mineral which is, uh, for example, serpentine. So, naging iba yung color ng sand. Generally, wala tayong types of sand. Pwede natin i-classify yung sand based on the color. Yung color naman, based on the source, like yung mga reddish na sands, ito yung mga sands na rich in hematite. Yung iron pa din. So, nagkakaroon na ng interaction between the oxygen in the atmosphere, yung sa surrounding oxygen, and then yung chemical composition ng rock. So, kaya nagkakaroon ng oxidation, nagkakaroon tayo ng kulay red ng mga bato. In the process of transport, lumiliit pa yan. Uh, mechanically transformed sila. So, kaya nagkakaroon ng mga kulay red na mga bato. Yung biogenic naman, ito yung mga sand na may mapapansin kayo ng mga kulay puti na poram, na corals. And then, magkahalo na yung mga silica rich. Yung silica rich naman, either sourced from a continental rich na uh, land, or either from the rock na beneath the water. So kaya kung pag umapa kayo, kahit tanghaling tapat, hindi gaano mainit yung mga grains. Kasi yung silica ay very stable sa low pressure and higher temperature. So hindi kaano naapektuhan ng init ng araw. So matagal siya bago uminit. So mas tolerable yung mga higher temperatures kapag silica yung mga grains. O di ba mga katribe, napakarami at napakatagal na proseso ang pinagdadaanan bago magkaroon ng buhangin sa ating mga beaches. Dagdag kaalaman lang ito para mas lalo pa nating mahalin at ingatan ang ganda ng naibibigay sa atin ng kalikasan. Music